Hello and welcome to another conversation. Today I'm talking with the remarkable Jacobo Fo. So if you love clowning and you want to learn more about clowns, stick around. It's just a conversation with a fellow clown. It's not very serious, we're clowning around. It's really just a clown Hi, my name is Barnaby and I'm founder of Clown Spirit, where we take the power of clowning and we use it to bring lightness, joy and connection to your life and the lives of everybody around you. Now, my guest on today's conversation is the remarkable Jacobo Fo. And if you don't know who Jacobo is, you might know who his parents were. Dario Fo, his father, and Franca Ram, his mother, are two of the most important creators of uh, comic and political theatre in Italy in the 20th century. Absolutely, um, you know, of extraordinary significance and importance, both of them political activists, playwrights, performers, directors, and clowns. And Jacopo has followed very much in their footsteps. So in just a moment, you're going to hear my really interesting pre-recorded conversation with Jacopo. But first of all, a quick message from my friend, Professor Teddy Love. Over to you, Teddy. Hello, everybody. Now, Mr. King and I are trying to grow this channel. We're trying to get the marvellous art of clowning to as many people as we can around the world. And there's so many ways that you can join in. You can hit the subscribe button below this video. You could give us a thumbs up. It really helps to boost the channel. Or you could get into the chat and tell us your thoughts, your questions about clowning. Or better still, you could check out our amazing Patreon site and find all the cool bonuses that you get if you become a Clownversation supporter. So many ways for us to get the clown out. Back to you in the studio, Mr. King. Thank you so much, Teddy. Now, in just a moment, we're going to get into this pre-recorded interview with Jacobo, which was actually conducted in Italian or rather with a translator. So I want to give a huge shout out and thanks to Stefania Taviano, who, who is a professional interpreter, translator, and she worked with us live uh, to, to translate between myself and Jacobo. And you'll hear her voice and see a little bit of her in the edit that I made. Now, this interview was really, um, really incredible because Jacobo is quite different from many of my other guests. He's not um, kind of in the professional clown world in the same way, but he he draws on so many ideas and exp is exploring so many ideas that are resonant with clowning. In particular, this idea that, you know, clowning affects the world, that he actually said, now is the time of the clowns. He said that all attempts to do things in a serious way have failed and that so it is time to bring in the clowns. He talked a lot about Patch Adams and his work, a laughter yoga, the idea of clowns as shamans. And, you know, Jacobo's own experience uh, is incredibly diverse. He's not only a comic performer and theatre maker, he's also a political activist, a writer. He was a cartoonist as in, in political um, journals. Uh, he founded this amazing kind of ecological university or a sort of farm uh, where he brings people for educational experiences and they're experimenting with all kinds of, you know, environmental um, initiatives. So he really spans a huge range of, of activity in the realm of art, environment and politics. It's really, really a fascinating conversation. I know you're going to enjoy it. So thanks once again to Stefania Taviano for translating. And now here was my conversation with Jacobo Fo. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this clownversation. Thank you to you. You called me for this uh, meeting. I like it. So um, just to get to know you a little bit, would be great to know who are your favorite clowns, either alive, ones who are alive today, or ones who are no longer alive today. Uh, Patch Adams. Kataria or Kataria, è un indiano che ha inventato lo yoga della risata. 
Kataria o Kataria, Kataria um, is an Indian clown. He invented the laughter yoga, and together with Milud and Patch Adams, he managed to make 300 people laugh for an hour without saying a word, just by laughing. He's capable of having entire squares full of people uh, laughing, um, again, just by laughing himself. <laughs> So this happened um, in 1998, 99 at the Libera Universi University of Alcatraz. Uh, these were two clowning courses. So they trained, 600 clowns were trained. We're talking about clown doctors um, who do clowning in hospitals to make children laugh. Do you, Jacopo, do you think of yourself as a clown? Um, or I know you're an actor, you're a comic, you, you're an actor, but do you think of yourself as a clown or more as a comic actor? And is there a difference? So I consider myself both an actor and a clown because I perform in theatres, I do monologues, I do stand-up comedies. They tend to be autobiographical, but I'm also a clown, for example. I acted, I performed as a clown when in 1999, we occupied the Italian Health Ministry because clowning in hospitals was forbidden. Uh, it was eight of us. We fought about for this and since then, um, clowning in hospitals is permitted. So for me, clowning means fighting. That's an amazing story. Um, and so you you are a very you you see clowning as political. See, yeah. But what I actually do, I use, let's say, um, uh, the clowning dress, the role of clowning in political context. Uh, since the 70s, because I was part of a group. Um, uh, this group used, again, the um, uh, clown dress uh, in political context for political aims, and we called ourselves Metropolitan Indians. Why? Um, why, why this name, Metropolitan Indians? In Italia, At the time, in Italy, there was uh, almost a civil war. Young mm. people uh, getting to squares, fighting with any kind of tools that they found, you know, stones, molotovs, whatever, and, and were fighting against the police, against fascists, who were obviously trying to stop them. Ma ci furono molti morti. A un certo punto, una una corrente. Okay, so then at some point, let's say a current within this group, a smaller group, realized that violence um, was not good, wasn't useful. Uh, they were almost like military, let's say they were militant, they fought with all kinds of means, but they stopped using violence. In piazza, decise di smetterla di combattere. What happened after the police killed Lorusso in Bologna, then the first action after this? So 50,000 people gathered from all over Italy, but a small group had weapons. So there was part of the movement, the armed group, let's say, uh, because there was a huge protest uh, throughout the city. But part of this, which was armed, uh, wanted to go and attack, get to the municipality, which obviously was being defended by the police. So what we did at some point spontaneously, like 2,000 of us sat down decided to defend, in inverted commas, the police against this armed group. And this was the first time where a political communist group defended the police. Credo uno dei rari casi in cui una parte del movimento comunista abbia difeso la polizia. E la parte armata 
So the armed group could not attack us because we were basically sitting down on the floor, singing, saying things, making stupid uh, faces or saying stupid things. So we were outside the logic of attack, of violence. Dalla logica dello scontro, noi eravamo da un'altra parte. Eh, la settimana dopo a Milano ci trovavamo in un migliaio. So, for example, another episode was in Milan the following week. Again, it was a communist group. What we did, we were facing the police, but instead of attacking them, we started doing their game with the handkerchief, calling a number 32. We call it the flag. The flag uh, uh, game, <laughs> and so and then the police started to attack, but we were just keeping on. We continued playing that game. So this was the first time in history where the flag game was being played between communists on one hand and police on the other, and we won <laughs> against the police. Si fa anche in America il gioco della bandiera. Well, did you play that game in the United States, or do I have to explain it? I don't know the game. The way it works is if there are two groups and in the middle somebody says a number, let's say 25, the, the, the people in the 25th position in both groups have to run and the first person who touches the, uh, um, the handkerchief wins. So this is, um, uh, to me, an example of clown in a way, bringing that clown logic right into a violent situation. This is where the name comes from, because we were doing crazy things, let's say, theatrical performances or the theatrical actions. And this was obviously combined with political satire. For example, the magazine called the Male, Evil, um, was um, with drawings, was printed and sold. Uh, in those years, we sold 100,000 copies. Wow. Hey. E anche quello era un giornale di satira. So what we did, for example, um, following on from Charles Abdou in France, we did some, something which was printing fake editions of major Italian newspapers with fake news like uh, Martians are arriving. And this was legal, but nobody stopped us because what we did was, was just, you know, funny. You had a a connection from uh, to, to clowning to the to the history of clown from a very young age, I assume, because you are the son of Dario Fo, who is, I think, thought of as one of the most influential, well-known clown artists in the world. So I'm I'm interested in what did you learn about clowns and clowning from your father Dario Fo. Ma una cosa a livello generale. Okay, so one general thing that I learned is what uh, French people called attitude. Attitude in the sense that the your ability to perform to make people laugh is very much related to who you are, who you want to be and how you feel quanto ti emozioni, quanto ti interessano le altre persone. Eh, okay, so for example, there's a very interesting example case of an actress who gets on stage for a comedy, to perform in a comedy for the first time, and she's completely covered in white. And the audience laughs, everybody laughs. This actress gets sick. She's replaced by another actress who does exactly the same thing. She gets on stage for the first time, covered in white, nobody laughs. I saw that and I asked my father, why is this happening? Why did this happen? And he said to me, it is attitude. Uh, è qualcosa di magico. Well, it is something magic. I would say almost mystical, but I'm a layman, I, you know, I, I don't believe. So uh, this is why I've started to um, teach and I why I created this yoga clown. Eh, questo è un discorso, diciamo, generale. 
Yes, so the, what I said earlier on is a general thing. The, 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 the other thing is related to the type of theatre that we perform, that we do. It is a popular kind of theatre in the sense that we also interact with the audience. Sometimes members of the audience intervene and we talk to the audience as if we were talking to a friend. So there's no wall, there's a lot of empathy. Communication, vicinanza col pubblico. Non c'è una parete visibile che divide il teatro, il teatranti dal pubblico. Noi stiamo cercando di organizzare. Okay, so I'm trying to get um, uh, actors from um, all over the world, US, from the US, Chinese, Japanese, to direct because what happens with the comedy shows, um, the comedies by my father and my mother is that when they are performed abroad, they perform them as if they were serious um, plays uh, with a certain tone in acting. And, and that doesn't work. It is not really appropriate for those kind of shows. They should be performed in a more natural, spontaneous way, let's say. In Italia, uh, il teatro comico. So um, basically, this is related to um, Italian comic theater, which is mystical. It is related to the faith in God and to a mother's line, let's say, society, uh, whereby the only way to get in touch with the goddess was through um, orgasm and laughter era l'orgasmo e la risata. Ne 2500 anni yeah, fa. Yeah, for example, 2500 years ago in a city called Atella, which is near uh, Naples, chariots were organized with comedians who went to celebrate fertility rituals and people had to laugh. People laughed. della fertilità e bisognava ridere. Imagine 2,500 years ago, a city whose economy was based, or, you know, was related to the fact that comedians had to people, had to make people laugh because it was believed, you know, for the spring rituals that if people didn't laugh, then corn wouldn't grow. Mm. Yeah, so for example, think about uh, Dario Fo's Mistero Buffo that was performed in churches, used to be performed in churches. Mia madre viene da una famiglia di attori girovaghi. My mother, for example, belonged to a family of actors, traveling actors, and my great grandfather had been adopted by a family who was an orphan, adopted by a family of uh, traveling actors. <laughs> So, for example, my grandfather became very famous, very famous, because what he did, he, uh, let's say, wrote and performed a speech for a cow which, which had died, a funerary speech, because the, um, the owner of the cow had asked him to do that. And so, he, you know, my grandfather um, explained all the um, uh, value, you know, the value of this cow. So this is just to tell you that uh, theater at the time but had both the function to make people laugh as well as to move people. So, for example, in seven days, at the um, famous San Carlo Theatre in Naples. I'm going to um, do a, a lab, um, a free, which is free, and I'm going to show, do a clown show focusing on the problems, the central problems in life. Non parlerò di politica. So in, my, in this uh, lab, I'm not going to talk about politics. I'm going to talk about the three ways that make people laugh, which is, you know, people laugh for gags which are based on impossible things, on the impossible, gags based on illusion, and ga gags, sorry, based on mistakes. So I'm going to show, I'm going to try and show that these three, let's say, laws governing laughter correspond to 
the la uh, laws governing the universe. So I'm not going to talk about politics, but I'm going to talk about science. Well, for example, the, the universe is the result of what happened during the uh, Big Bang. It is impossible. Uh, la vita si è sviluppata sul pianeta Terra. Okay, so basically the way life started uh, on, on Earth, you know, obviously very complex uh, uh, beings. What happened? There, there was a bacteria which lived in an um, underground volcano, which met with the mitochondrium. Um, and so what they met, they probably made love, you know, they got in touch. And after that, you know, life, life started. And so every cell in our bodies is the result of this. Noi abbiamo... So basically, the, the flower, you know, the or orchidea that manages, you know, obviously in relation to the coleopter, you know, an insect, which when it smells um, or reproduces the smell of the, fem of the female, well, basically, the insect prefers to have a relation with the flower rather than with the female insect. In other yeah. words, you know, it corresponds to the third law of um, laughter of planning, which is based on, obviously, you know, um, in, um, let's say, inventing. So in, in this lab, I'm going to show all kind of all different forms of clowning, uh, theater, even medieval theater, uh, even Atelanes comedies, but always trying to identify the law governing both theater and science. I heard that there was an organization that you created uh, called the Tribe of Clowns. And I was interested in what its purpose was and what it achieved, the Tribe of Clowns. The Clown Party. È un partito che... Since it is a comic party, it doesn't really exist. But what happens is that at some point, a group is formed and uh, it kind of gets together for political reasons. Mm. Uh, mm. So, for example, one of the first things that we did uh, was to create an independent state. Uh, La Libera Università di Alcatraz is mm. an independent state which has its own currency, its own government. Inter it interacts with other micro governments. So it obviously, it's obviously a game with a political impact, with a political message. Um, because, um, uh, yes, you know, other gov main governments are having huge problem nowadays, and so we want to react to this with our independent state. So, for example, in, a, uh, in terms of energy, uh, we produce more energy than we use, that we consume. So, and another thing is the only place in Italy where you can be buried without paying anything for free. And you choose, depending on your hobby or your job, you can choose the area, like the writer's area, if you're a writer, uh, the areas of, you know, um, other, depending on the, on the job that you do. <laughs> the feeling I get is that for you, everything in life is possible to make a game or a joke out of it. Sì. Però le persone serie hanno... Yes, it's true because uh, so far serious people have decided have governed and we see the results. <laughs> Uh, the result is self-destruction, basically. Now is the time of people like us who are not serious. Maya civilization had foreseen the end of the world for um, 2012. So now is the time of clowns and you can't see it yet, but you're going to see it. Continuare a ridere e a scherzare quando la polizia... So for example, when the police is attacking you, 
Not to react while continue laughing is much more difficult than reacting, of course. Non reagire è difficile. Non reagire e continuare a ridere e continuare a prendere in giro è molto difficile. Eh, e ottieni dei risultati potenti. Cioè, quando... Mh, eh, So, for example, in that way, through laughter, you can achieve, um, you know, powerful results. For example, we are against marching, you know, thousands and thousands of people marching. But what, what we did instead in, in several, for several years, uh, regarding the march between Perugia and Assisi, is a peace movement, with, um, you know, made of um, uh, um, priests who go through the march. What they did was to bring chairs and water for these people, washing their feet. You know, ma making them uh, really, you know, um, relax after kilometers and kilometers of walking. So, in, in other words, you know, was try we're trying to say, let's do something innovative, different, uh, to get that result. And we did this for years. You've, you've referred to clowns as um, shaman, as shamans. Um, you had a festival, I think, called the, the Shaman Clowns Festival of Transversal Ideas. Now, I don't know what transversal ideas are, but it sounds interesting. And I'm curious in what way it, for you is a, is a clown a kind of shaman? Um, quando io ho incontrato Pechad, ma sono stato stupito, but when I met Patch Adams, I was impressed by what he did with children in hospitals. Because what, what he did or what he does, um, it's comic, it's a game, but it's also very, very similar. It is actually a form of shamanic ritual because what he, he does, he has a belt. In this belt, you see like a village. There are little mirrors which correspond to the windows of those of the houses in this village. And he asks the child, he asks children to look in that, in, uh, to, to look at those windows. And this is like a form of hypnosis. And this is what uh, happens in shamanic ritual. So what he does is to get the child's, the, the child's attention focusing on that window as a form of hypnosis to forget about the pain. And so this is why I define them as shamans. And, and this has to do with transversal ideas, because if you think about uh, therapy um, in hospitals, clowning in hospitals. They used to tell us that we were crazy, that we were horrible people telling us, how can you imagine to go and play when there's a mother who is suffering because her child is about to die? Io credo che il motivo per cui il movimento... Ok, so uh, basically progressive movements, environmental movements um, have helped a lot of people, but they did not manage to change the system. And the reason is because they face, they, they fight against the system, like one against the other rather than going transversally. And this is what transversal ideas mean. And this is what clown actually do. So uh, what, what you need to do, instead of going against something you fight, you need to go around it to subvert it. The idea is more of subversion rather than contraposition or contrast. The mundial is losing. The war in Ukraine is the demonstration that the way di fare delle persone serie che hanno ottimi obiettivi è sbagliato, non funziona. Servono i clown. So transversal means subversion. It means to go around and find a different way in that's not 
oppositional. Is that right? Sì, ma questo riguarda anche affrontare dei problemi tecnologici. This is, so this is related to technology, science, for example, Margulis found that inside each cell there are two microorganisms um, and, that, and then she changed her way of thinking and this is how she got the Nobel Prize. Mm. So this, this leads to my, really my final question, which has to do with what, what do we need to do now as clowns? Right, because you said uh, maybe this is the age of of the clowns now, and you also said that clowning has to do with the religion. But we're we're living in a world which is lacking in spirituality, and religion is 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 decreasing in in its power. So how do how do we need to step into this age of clowning as clowns? How do we? How do we create? How do we invent? What, what is our next step? Io in questo momento sto facendo molti collegamenti con gente da tutte le parti del mondo. I'm trying to get in touch with people from all over the world, trying to create alliances with actors, theaters, uh, to try and, and convey the idea that um, clowning comedy is, is a new way to, to face, uh, let's say, reality uh, that, you know, you can, you can love people by having fun. Um, so it, it, it has to do with philosophy. It, it is a new philosophy. And I've tried to do this, to convey this through many books that I've written. Now I'm trying to write another book to sum up everything that I've done in these 65 years. Uh, the comedian uh, continues, uh, is the continuation of war, but with different weapons. And it is a development of faith, of believing in God with new prayers. It is a way of loving people, loving mankind while having fun. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I really, um, we could talk for much longer, but this, uh, you know, our time is mm -hmm. up and I really think that what you said is very inspiring. And okay. I wonder if you have any final words you'd like to communicate before we, before we finish, anything you'd like to say. Se qualcuno vuole venire... If you want to come and join me in Naples, the lab is for free. There are still few few um, seats, uh, you know, available. Uh, so just contact me, send me a message on my uh, Facebook page. You'll find the address. And if you can't come to make a show with me, just perform and make a show of your own because people need to laugh. Abbiamo bisogno di far ridere la gente in tutto il mondo. So you're in this lab, you're going to make a show. See, so there are 16 meetings, 13 afternoons from April to June, and then two last days with the with the show. Di spettacolo finale. In questo momento, per concludere, vorrei dire che at my age, um, you start thinking about death. And death is something not nice. It makes you anxious. Um, so what, what, what I can think of is to make really, to make crazy things. Un modo per reagire, mettersi a fare cose veramente divertenti. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jacobo. It's a very a great pleasure to meet you. And uh, thank you so much for giving up your time so that we can learn okay. from you. Grazie, Jacopo. Bello vedere. Ciao, grazie a voi. Buona serata. Buona serata. Ciao, Jacopo. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And of course, why don't you check out the other conversations there on my YouTube channel, on the Clown Spirit YouTube channel. There's over 65 conversations now there with all kinds of amazing clown teachers. And of course, please also check out our Patreon site, we couldn't do this without you. You are absolutely 
crucial in helping us to spread the word about clowning, transform people's understanding about clowning and unleash as many clowns into the world as possible. Thank you so much in advance for your support. Tune in next week again for another amazing conversation. Until then, of course, as always, keep clowning. <laughs>